established that Embakasi explosion victims will wait longer to get their compensation despite the promise by the government to support them. Now, Energy CS Davis Churcher, while appearing before the committee of the two houses of parliament, say the matter is in the hands of the disaster management that is being chaired by Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa. KTN's political affairs reporter Daniel Karyuki has more. 27 days after the blast in Mradi area, Mbakasi, Nairobi, victims are yet to be compensated despite the promise made by Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa. Uh, you say... Appearing before Energy Committee in Parliament Thursday, Energy CS Davis Chirchir was tasked to explain why victims are yet to be compensated despite the government assuring that they would put measures to help the affected families. What I have heard you say here is that uh, the people of Embakasi are the ones to look for what you call the point of call in this particular office. Uh, is it really fair, Waziri? Because when there are floods in Northeastern, I don't see the people from Northeastern coming to the Deputy President's office to look for support. I want to remind you today that you are under oath, and I also want to refer you to Article 153, 4B of the Constitution. I would like to request that you uh, you submit a status update to this house i did commit to follow up with the office of the deputy president as regarding the working of the committee to bring to closure the issue of compensation uh if it was within my jurisdiction i would say we will work within a week or within two weeks. While visiting victims of the inferno, Deputy President Gadi Gashagwa promised that the government will fully support the victims. But when cornered by committee members, the NGCS said he did not have a definite answer. But because it's in another body, I'm just, it is being responsible chair. Uh, if compensation has not happened today and there's a committee that is tasked with that responsibility, it's just good that I follow up, I make sure they expedite and ensure this thing is brought to a closure. It's of concern to me, uh, as is of to the members, to the Kenyans. This as it further emerged that the truck driver of the tanker that exploded killing 12 people and leaving over 600 with serious burn woods, diverted and went to the unlicensed plant to refill gas cylinders. According to IPRA Director General Daniel Kipto, the driver diverted in the dark of the night and went to fill in cylinders where he was not supposed to go. One was not licensed. Two, it was not a filling plant. It was operating, as Waziri had said, as a garage by day. And in the dead of the night, uh, trucks were driving in and being refilled. As we, we have clarified in the document that is before you, that there was a truck that came in and was filling directly from the truck into cylinders, which is one, not safe. Two is not legal in terms of the legal notice. 100, which is the LPG regulation, which we do enforce. So far, more than 20 companies have been shut down, even as 21 liquid petroleum gas, LPG storage and filling plants sued Energy and Petroleum Regulatory Authority, IPRA, for unlawfully closing down their plants without notice. Daniel Karioki, KTN News, at the Parliament Buildings, Nairobi. Kenya Medical Practitioners and Dentist Union Secretary.